good evening friends meeting again with the concluding part of the mental diseases and their management homeopathic management and in the yesterday's lecture we have discussed the aphorism number 228 where dr samuel hanneman have explained regarding the how to handle the first variety of mental diseases that is the those mental diseases which are aroused because of suppressed corporeal diseases and those diseases which are soric in origin so those most typical disorders from the mental diseases are the first variety of mental diseases where you can get the schizophrenic patients where you can get the obsessive compulsive neurosis patients where you get depression care patients or anxiety neurosis patients and those who are in such a deep mental pathology the patients are patients have variety of behavior and here how the physician should behave with them that aspect he tried to explain and first important point which he has explained over there that the physician's behavior to the patient is very important and to his relatives also he should, he has used very specific words he should observe the patient and behave with the patient scrupulously so so that patient feels that you have really interest in treating him that is most important point which he has explained over there second important point which he has explained is the uh, the main, regarding the mental regime that if the patient is in a furious state he is in a angry state comes to you your behavior should be calm and quiet but firm this is more important when you remain calm and quiet with firm resolution you can handle such situation very perfectly you should not get angry or irritable <clears throat> the third important thing for the doleful querulous lamentation those who who are in a lamenting mood who are weeping who are just explaining and complaining and complaining in such types of patients what he says a mute display of commiseral commiseration in looks and gestures your looks towards the patient should be so so sympathetic that patient should feel that you are really understanding what the patient feels and what are the patient's emotions and problems are there and with which you can approach towards them the third important thing is there are certain patients who are senseless chattering in such types of patients you should not attend them completely but not wholly unattend them both things you some sometimes you give attention plus listen and understand what is the problem and understand that he is loquacious and running from one point to another point the fourth variety there is where the disgusting variety of patients are there whose behavior is absolutely disgusting abominable conduct total inattention is very important in such types of cases these are four important hint which he has explained over there and at the same time he explains one more thing you should not <coughs> disturb the patient if a patient is in a violent mood don't reproach the patient but arrange your clinic arrange your things in such a way that it will not cause destruction to you and your clinic also and last point which he has explained over there is that you should not force the patient to take medicine if you force him he will not take it in a proper manner instead of that if you use the homeopathic medicines without patient's attention in mixed with his diet or his drinks it never alters the taste and patient takes it without knowing so that you cannot make make him compulsory to take the medicine over there and the hazardous methods which are generally tried in allopathic science in for such patients in specifically in mad houses those are very dangerous and for which he has explained one footnote that is the that's why he has explained necessity for any corporeal punishments and tortures wherever whatever may be avoided and he has given footnote footnote number 125
today we have to learn this Pugma. And what he wants to explain regarding this, which he tries to explain. It is impossible not to marvel. Marvel manje naulai chigoshto. It is impossible not to marvel at the hard-heartedness and indiscretion. Indiscretion manje asamajas pavana, avivek pavana. At the hard-heartedness and indiscretion of the medical men in many establishments for the patients of this kind, who without attempting to discover the true and only efficacious mode of curing such disease, which is by homeopathic medicine and antisoric means, content themselves by, with torturing these most pitiable of all human beings with most violent blues and other painful torments. He is talking with the allopathic line of treatment. Generally, the patient, uh, there are institutes where such types of patients are kept. And what do they do? They, there are very violent punishments are given. The torture on the part of patient is much more. They behave like a hard-heartedness towards such types of patients. And that's why once patient enters over there in bad, mad house, he never comes out being unhealthy. He remains over there, ultimately dies because of that. It is quite difficult to bring him out from such a thing. And that's why he compares the homeopathic management with the allopathic management. He explains that instead of that, if they try to find it out what is the right remedy for that patient, and give him, give it unknowingly to the patient. You can save that patient. There is no need to keep it, keep him inside the jail, such a jail. So this is very important part where he compares the modern treatment with the homeopathy. By this unconscious, consensuous. By this unconsensuous, consensuous manja satsad vevel buddhi. Unconscious, where this, this, when this conscience is lost, by this unconscious and revolting procedure. Revolt मुझे एकादे गोष्टी बदल केस करने केस वाने बदल प्रोसीजर दे डिबेस डिबेस मुझे हिंकस करने एकादे गोष्टी बदल अंधे तिटका रहा उत्पन्न हुई ला अशपद दे दिया by this unconscious and revolting procedure, they debase themselves beneath the level of turnkeys. Turnkeys in a house of correction. Turnkeys manje house of correction. Remand home. Kadak shiksha. Asha thikane, those patients who are kept in such types of places and where the on the part of patient, the treatment is very dangerous, very hard, harmful, very persecuted. And what he says, by this unconscious and revolting procedure, they debase themselves beneath the level of tankies in a house of correction for the latter inflict such chastisement. Inflict manje kadi Chastisement. Chastisement manje kadak shiksha. As the duty devolving on their office, devolving chakade sopone dene. As the duty devolving on their office and on the criminals only, whilst the former appear from the humiliating consciousness, 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 humiliating, humiliating manjaman kandana, apmanas padwagni, humiliating. Of their usefulness as physician, only to vent, vent manje bhaer padi, their spite, spite manje dvesh matsar, at the supposed incurability of mental disorders, in a harshness towards the pitiable innocent sufferers, for they are too ignorant to be of any use, and too indolent to adopt a judicious mode of treatment. So if you go towards such places, where the patients, such men, mental disease patients are there. There are many institutes. It is situated in Eroda in Pune, near Pune. Or in, even in Mumbai, there is at the Thane, there is one more institute. Such types of institutes are there. 
you just go and observe what do they do if the patient becomes violent why they never thinks why is violent they never talks with him with him the reason behind violence they keeps him tied with the bed and because of such thing which which is against his will he becomes more harmful more violent more destructive there was one patient i observed that was taken to a, such a one institute at nasik and he was asking them that he wants to go home he wants to go home. he was just young chap of 15 years and he was kept over there because of having first variety of mental disease and it was rather difficult those 20 days for him and he was day and night crying that he wants to go home but they have kept him he was not give having any contact with their relative and he was there when after 20 days they brought him at home he was so violent that he never wants to listen to anyone in fact the exact opposite thing has happened because the punishment which was which was done on the part of him was very dangerous he said that if he was he was just crying and crying and he asking for to connect with the uh, home people they avoids it and many times he has not get getting the dinner runs and such types of hazardous methods always creates more danger on the part of such mental disordered patients it never cures at all you cannot bring out mental health in this way and this is what he wants to explain if you want to bring this patient out of such a dangerous situation you have to give him a right stimulus a right remedy on the basis of symptom similarity you have to match a remedy to the state of the patient find it out and give if the patient is refusing to take the medicine give him it unknowingly to the patient and patient will be cured so how to handle such and how one should not handle in such a way both aspects he tries to explain over there so in earlier aphorism he explains what one should do being a homeopathic physician but at the same time in the footnote one what one should not do he has explained in the footnote and there is one more aphorism which we will going to finish in two day session that is aphorism number 229 on the other hand contradiction eager explanation rude corrections invectives invectives manje nindatmak bhashan karna and invectives as also weak timorous timorous reading timorous manje bitra bad are quite out of place with such patients they are equally pernicious modes of treating mental and emotional malady but such patients are most of all exasperated exasperated manje santap hone and they are complaint aggravated by contumely contumely manje avahelana fraud fasavnu and deceptions labadi fasavnu that they can detect the physician and keeper must always pretend to believe them to be possessed of the reason so what he is explaining over there such types of methods are not at all useful if you try to explain certain things if you try to contradict certain things with such types of patient if you try to give more psychotherapy towards those patient it is not at all of any use for the first variety of patients that is the first type of mental disease such methods never works because patient is not in such a mood that he can listen already he is disturbed already he is depressed and if you try to explain him something he goes exactly opposite he understands or takes it on the bad part of it and that's why it becomes absolutely opposite to him so <clears throat> such such a things always creates the problem you should not go on explaining many things to such patients and that's why the physician keeper must always pretend to believe them to be possessed of the reasons possessed of the reason means possessed of reason ekadi goshta angi banavun that the how the physician should 
the physician should be firm. He should be calm. He should not go and explain too much things to him because he is not in such a mood. The psychotherapy will not go into work. You should not you should not behave such a manner that the patient feels that he is, you are deceiving him. That is more important part which he explains over there. The, if he feels that you are doing a deception against him, he will not return and in fact he starts showing a malice against you. He hates you and that should not happen. Being a homeopathic patient, what should not, what should happen that you must behave in such a manner that patient should start believing on you. And in such types of patient, such type of behavior is more important. What he says in next paragraph, all kinds of external disturbing influences on, on their senses and disposition should be, if possible, removed. There, no, there are no amusements for their clouded spirit, no salutary distractions, no means of instructions, no soothing effect from conversations, books or other things for soul that pines and frets. Pines manje zhurne kush Frets, fresh manje kajine shobdhon, or frets in the chains of deceased body. No invigoration <coughs> for it, but the cure, it is only when the bodily health is changed for the better that tranquility and comfort again beam upon their mind. Beam manje dharakne. So what he is explaining? He is explaining one important thing over there. He is explaining that in such types of patient, you should not go on explaining many things. There is no use that you ask the patient to read such and such book and you will get better. He is not in a mood to read something. You should not ask that you listen to music. He will not going to listen because he is not in such a mood. You should not ask him to listen certain um, lectures. He is not in such a mood to listen that. So such things are quite common. First variety of mental diseases, they are purely of psoric origin and this and until you find it out perfect remedy for the patient, the patient will not come out of the situation. And if you give right remedy, definitely he will come out of the situation. Definitely he will show the signs of um, uh, freshness on their, on their face, in their body language. I'll share one case. It was very, very interesting case. One of the big professor in the uh, Sangam Nair, very good orator. He was so fantastic orator in Marathi. And when he used to talk, even the thousands of people are there. They, not a single person will leave that place. Such a big orator from Sangam Nair once came to me. He was in a deep depression. Nearly I have spent two hours for listening all his complaints. He was explaining many things, many things in his life and why he reached to that level of depression. That also he has explained. He was knowing everything. He was a person who, who had a thorough knowledge of spirituality, then the philosophy, everything. But he, his face not even show a slightest smile, not at all. And he was in great depression and he, he was talking and talking and everything he has explained what has happened in his life. After two hours of case taking, I reached to the remedy. I never explained anything, what you do, what you will, what you can do. He said that, Doctor, you know that I am a very good speaker. Even today, in such a depression, when I give speech, people listen and they don't know from what I am suffering from. But I lost my interest in my life. Absolutely. I am so disturbed. I want to tell you one thing. And then he has explained one thing. I used to do regular sadhana between 3 to 5 a.m. in the morning. And it is there since last 20, 30 years I am doing this. I am I'm, I'm too happy while doing this earlier. 
But what has happened in the last six months? I used to see one picture over there. When I enter into the meditation, I goes over there, and all of a sudden it starts. There was a, a small lamp which is there, and gradually it is tapering down, 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 and all of a sudden when it starts getting off, I comes out of that situation. And I becomes nervous after observing that. I try to interpret what it means. I feel that it is a very bad sign on part of my health. I feel it might cause problem for me. So this is this is the picture. So I have given him a remedy, like cases. On the basis of whole totality, I prescribed him like cases only. And asked him to meet me after 15 days. After 15 days, when he entered in my clinic, he was absolutely a different man. He entered with a big loud smile when he entered and he said one word to me, Doctor, you are Mauli. The word which he has used was. And then he was talking with me and he, he said, you brought me again into the life. I'm too happy. I'm doing all things. The day I took the dose, the life had changed. I slept whole night very nicely. And next day morning, when I wake up, I was absolutely fresh. And then he explained, Doctor, I, I told you one thing in my last discussion with you. I've told you that I used to get such a um, during meditation a such picture in front of my mind that there is a lamp and that goes on coming down, down, down and it. I want to tell you that that now the reverse happens. There is something which starts and starts blooming and blooming and blooming and it develops. In fact, the date I took the dose, next day this has happened. And I'm observing this daily last 15 days. I'm too happy after getting that. This is very important. This is what a right remedy, how it works in such types of mental disease. The great depression where he was consuming a lot of antidepressive depression tablets, Left, he left all those and he started home every day. And he came out so confidently that thereafter he never suffered again. This was the case 20 years back, 20, not even 25 years back. It was very early in my this Indian Nagar clinic. And he's still, still happy whenever I used to meet him anywhere in the street, whenever he used to give the speech. He always talks with me and directly calls, Doctor, you are Mowgli. This is, this is his sentence. So this happens. When you do a right remedy, right stimulus, it works in such types of cases. And that is the only treatment which is needed. No psychotherapy for first type of variety or first type of mental disorder. And this is what he wants to explain over there in this evolution. So since yesterday, we have discussed two aborigines, 228 to 29. But keep it in your mind. In such types of patients, your behavior, how your behavior should be, that he has mentioned in the 228. And what one should not do, do that he has mentioned in 229. Tomorrow, we will continue with these mental diseases by completing the 230th aphorism. And today, we have finished one more footnote regarding this topic. The footnote where he has explained that madhouses which are created for such patients, they are more hazardous and produces more worse type of punishment on the part of patient creates the problem. So what one should do and what one should not do in first type of mental diseases, that's what he has tried to explain over there. Tomorrow we'll continue with the Next up is when finish the mental diseases and thereafter we have to start learning the intermittent diseases. Another important part, practical part and which is most common in present era. So we have to learn intermittent diseases in detail. So ask your friends to join such an activity. All students, specifically those who have 
attended to this session or registered this session, ask your friends to join. It's absolutely free. There is no charge. But go and ask them to attend such sessions where you can get the knowledge of organ. So that's all for today. Thank you everyone who have attended today's session. And one again, one more time, I'm telling you same thing on 14th, the PHS seminar is there. Those who are able to attend, attend that because you will learn a lot regarding how to handle rheumatic disorders with the knee. So that's all for today. We'll meet again tomorrow at the same time. Thanks a lot. If you have any queries there, we can have a chat. Otherwise, we'll stop. So we'll continue.